Hi, and welcome to part six of automating Active Directory with PowerShell tutorial series. So in the last videos, uh, we went over um, basically fetching our CSV file, fetching our AD employees, um, getting to compare both, and then using that comparison, uh, we managed to pull all the data that we need to create, sync, and remove our users. Um, so we went over at the end, the end of the last video, um, when we got to create the new users, we've had a few steps here. So when we created new user, we know that we need a username. We're going to be placing a user in an organizational unit based on uh, geographical um, office. So basically, if your office is in Toronto or if your office is in New York, you'll be in the designated OU. And then we can finally create the users. So the first one here um, that I see as being super important is creating the username. So each username needs to be unique. Uh, now you can pick um, a username that's easily going to be unique and basically put it as their employee ID. Um, but that doesn't make a very easy username to remember. Uh, you might get some complaints from users. Um, and then there's also the other way, which is um, like last name, first initial, which that's the one that we're going to be doing today. Uh, now, there are some problems with this one if you have multiple people with the same last name, and then you'll have some people with the same first initial as well. So we'll have to code around that. Now, this solution isn't 100% if you do have a lot of users with the same last name and the same um first few letters in their name which does get to be quite rare um if your company employs like 10,000 40,000 people it's definitely a possibility if you're a smaller scale uh organization where you guys have maybe just a thousand users this solution will most likely work 100% for you um, and then if you are much smaller, um, like under 500, I would definitely not see a problem um, unless you had a lot of people in that 500 that had the same last name. Um, but let's go ahead and let's just take a quick look to see what we're dealing with. Um, so what we need to do is we need to create um, a username. Now, there are some other things to keep in mind. Uh, we're definitely going to want to make sure that we don't have any characters that might be kind of weird in the name, uh, like spaces, dashes, uh, and apostrophes, because you can have last names that have those, um, or even first names that have those. So we're going to want to take those out, and then we're going to want to generate a username. So what we're going to want to first do here um, is let's just see if we can write something out super simple here um let's just write this down here and then i'll move the function up where it should be but let's create a function called new username now this one i'm starting the function um right off the bat i'm not going to try um to really kind of write something out beforehand just because there's really no commandlets for this already like this is going to be really um, a programming type function, you can say, uh, more stereotypical to like uh, a Python function or something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just put in our commandlet binding here anyways. And then we're going to accept some parameters. Now our parameters for our username, um, very easy to say that we're going to need a first name a last name, and then the domain. Um, so let's go ahead and let's put that in here as a parameter. Now, all of these are going to be mandatory. Uh, you kind of need these to create a user. So uh, let's put this as a string. And we are going to use the actual names, like given name and surname for this, just to make it easier. Let's just copy paste this here. And then for this one, we're going to put surname. And then for here, we're going to put domain. Perfect. So now we're intaking all of our 
uh, variables here. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a variable in this function called username. This is going to be our username uh, holder, basically. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to just simply do, uh, since we want to do last name, first initial, we're going to do the surname. And then we are going to do whoops, given name dot substring, and we're going to put zero comma one, which basically tells it to start at the index of zero, which is at the beginning of the name, and go for one character, which is going to grab us the first letter. So if we do this here, and let's just run this here. Now this is going to be our first test to see what it looks like. I like to do this. I know that this is not going to be our ending result because this will, as soon as you have one person with the same last name, the same first initial, um, you'll have repeating usernames. So we're going to avoid that, but let's just, try this here. So let's put the given name as uh, Richard here, and let's put the surname as Smith, and then the domain, which we aren't doing anything with right now, but we still require it. So let's just go ahead and do it. So we do see that we do get our username back as Smith R, which is exactly what we would expect. Last name Smith, first name Richard, Smith R is correct. So but now if we do, if we had a uh, Smith Johnson for some reason, now we have the dash in here. So we're gonna definitely wanna take these out um, when we do this. So one way to do it is by using re um, regex or regex. I'm not too, too sure how to pronounce that there, but uh, we could use that regular expression in full form. Um, or we could use um, PowerShell to do it. Now I'm going to use regex um, or regular expression to do it. Um, so to do that in PowerShell, you're just going to want to do a little square brackets here, put in regex just so PowerShell knows what it is. And we're going to put in a pattern here. And we are going to put in the pattern of backslash S for a space, straight bar for the or, and then we're going to do a dash and then another straight bar and then an apostrophe. And that should be good here. So now if we do a dash replace, and then here we're going to put the pattern is what we want to replace. So any spaces, any dashes, and any apostrophes, we're going to replace it with an empty string. Uh, just nothing there. So it's just going to take away the apostrophes, take away the dashes, and take away the spaces. So if we run this here now, we can see that it removed the dash, which is perfect. So we still have the problem of just having one username, um, but at least we get the dash out. Um, so that's good. And if we do a space, uh, you'll see that it's the same thing. And if we do a apostrophe, it'll be the same thing. Perfect. So that works. All right. So what we want to do is we want to be able to increment this value if for some reason the username already exists. Uh, so what I like to do here is I like to have an index variable here. So we're just going to set that to one because we want to start our counter at one. We know this. Now, if we go back to um, our beginner tutorial series, uh, when we went over loops, we saw a lot of different loops. We're going to be using the do while loop here. So we're going to do a do and then a while here, and then we're going to do while. Now we have to check our condition. Now what this is going to be is we're going to want to basically iterate through all the possible usernames until we don't find that username that actually exists. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to do 
get while, and then we're going to do get ad user, and then filter, and then we're going to do Sam account name, which is the username, um, like, because so we want to make sure that we capture, um, like we don't want case sensitive um, details here. And then let's put in our username variable. All right, so basically what this will do is right now, this will actually, um, give me one second here, let's do this here. All right, and then let's replace this with index. And then we just have to increment our index variable here. So we're gonna do that with index plus plus here. Um, okay, so that should be good. So let's go ahead and let's try to run this here. And we should get the same result back. Okay, perfect, so that works. So what we're gonna do here actually is we're gonna create a new user very quickly in Active Directory. I am just gonna create it using the GUI here just, to, just because I just wanna go and just create this, this account really fast here. Um, so let's do a Smith R account already. Um, Hopefully that's not the same. All right. So we have our user, um, Richard Smith here, and we have the username as Smith R. So in theory, when we run this, now it gives us Smith RI, which is perfect. Um, so that's exactly what we want. So what happens if we just have a Smith and then the name of R, we actually get an error here. Now I wanted to run this, even though this would be a no username would be, uh, would be found. What we wanna make sure is we wanna make sure that we don't call the substring on, so right now what it would do is loop through once, it would find that Smith R already exists. So it goes for it again, um, but the first name isn't long enough. So we want to make sure that this is not um, the username is not equal or not like, I should say, again, just because of case sensitivity, um, surname and then given name. So now if we do this, we will actually see that we do still get a Smith R, um, and that's fine. Um, so what we want to do um, is actually, uh, there's one thing that we need to do here, and that is going to be making sure that uh, this does not exist. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna do a, an if statement afterwards, and then we're gonna put in an else. So basically what we're doing is if you've gone through the entire loop and the username is set, if we find a user with that username, we are gonna want to um, throw an error. No usernames available for this user. 
And then else, we are just going to pass back the username, which is perfectly fine. Um, what this bro does, it bros up an exception um, so that um, your script will be able to capture that exception there. Um, so that should be good. So now if we do this, we should get the error saying that there's no usernames available. Perfect. So that's what we get. We get no usernames available for this user. And then if we just put in Rich here, we will get Smith RI. So this is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, so like I said, this is going to have some shortcomings. Um, obviously, if you had tons of Smith with the first letter R names, eventually you would run out. Um, but again, like they would have to be all the same names. So like eventually you'd have to have, let's say if it was Richard Smith that we were talking about here, um, you'd we would have the available usernames of Smith R, Smith R I, Smith R I C, Smith R I C H. Um, and eventually you kind of get the point. Um, you'd have A, A R. A R D. So these would be all the possible answers for this. Now, if you had a um, another employee by the name of Ricky Smith here, now you would have the same three, the same first three, uh, but then you would have a K and then a Y. So you do have some quite a lot of usernames to use here. Um, it really just kind of a hit and miss on how many employees you have with the exact same first name and exact same last name. Um, but like I said, I think if you're a company that just has um, one or 2,000 employees, you're probably going to be fine with this. Even if you're a company that has like 10,000 people, um, if the company spans worldwide, uh, you probably will not encounter this problem. Um, where I am right now, uh, we use this naming method. We have roughly about 3,000, 4,000 ish employees. Um, and we have not encountered any issues with this method of naming. Um, so I think that it does, it is a very valid method of, of giving usernames to your users. Um, so that's the first part, really, that we're going to be using to create our usernames uh, and create our users. So basically, we have this function to create a new username. When we go to create our user, we're going to be running this function to get our username back. And then uh, we're going to be creating the user based on that username that we get. Uh, but we do still have to place uh, the user in the organizational unit based on the office name. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to write a little function uh, that just kind of goes in, checks your Active Directory and your CSV file. Make sure that you have all the organizational units in place that you need and either give you a warning or create them automatically uh, based on what you want to do. I'm going to be showing you how to create them automatically this way. Uh, if you have a script that basically just tells you you need to create them, why not create them in the script? And then after that video, we're going to be creating our users. So make sure to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when that next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.